Good morning. Good day. How are you, Nadu? I'm well. How are you, Deacon? Just living the dream. Awesome. This is a wonderful time. Yes, indeed. Another week of I Know Kids. Yes, welcome, yes. Welcome. Let's go. Today, we're going to talk about a couple different things. Our point, though, is Jesus is dependable, mm -hmm. so we're dependable. We're going to be reading from Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 42, and then 49 through 56. So, to start off our lesson, we usually have somebody to pray. So, why don't I have somebody come on in and pray for us? Mr. Ellie! Mr. Ellie, Welcome. thank you. <laughs> so, step right up. There you go. Dear God, thank you for being dependable, Lord. And whenever you do a promise, Lord, you never break it up, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank that you. That is an yeah. awesome thought. High five. Yes, Great. Indeed. So, Today's lesson is coming out of Luke, and we have somebody to read, so May, come on out. Yes, indeed. There you go. When Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him. They were all accepting him. Then a man named Jairus came. He was a synagogue ruler. He fell at Jesus' feet. He begged Jesus to come to his house. His only daughter was dying. She was about 12 years old. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus. Jairus was the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, the messenger said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe. She will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let everyone go in with him. He took only Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. During this time, all the people were crying and sobbing loudly over the child. Stop crying, Jesus said. She is not dead. She is sleeping. They laughed at him. They knew she was dead, but he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and right away she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were amazed, but Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Fantastic. Thank you, May. Reading. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> so, Miss Nadu, we're talking about Jesus being dependable here. Amen. And there's a lot going on in this story. So, yes. we have Jairus who's going up to him in faith and saying, Lord, we need you to heal her. My daughter's sick. Jesus says, sure, let's go do it. Yes. On the way, in the part that we didn't necessarily read from Luke chapter eight, Jesus actually heals somebody else who was like desperately seeking him. Wow. So he heals her and then right after, Jairus gets this information that the daughter has passed. So don't even bother the teacher, it's all over. Wow. But Jesus says something. And so what we're talking about here is being dependable. So for me, that means Jesus will follow through. So Jesus said, we're gonna go and heal. This whole thing happened. They found out that she had passed. And Jesus said, nope, we're gonna keep going. So let's Amen. keep going. Amen. So Amen. when you think of somebody who's dependable, what qualities are you looking for? Wow, somebody who's dependable always shows up. Mm. Somebody who is dependable is somebody I can say, you know, this and this and this either needs to happen or will happen or I'm entrusting you to do something um, and it I don't even have to worry about it anymore. Mm. Um, somebody who's dependable is often also prompt, meaning they're on time, right? Mm. Um, and somebody who's dependable is, of course, did I already say trustworthy? Trustworthy is trust, helpful, Trustworthy, Absolutely. they're trustworthy. Oh, that's so important. If you're trustworthy, that means when something, when you say you're gonna do something, you are gonna do it. Absolutely, so it's almost like an Instapot. You <laughs> take care, of, you have a, a particular recipe, it works every single time. You just wow. press the buttons in the right position and it all works. So a person obviously is much more complex than an Instapot. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. work with that. So these qualities are really great qualities to have at all. If I'm looking for somebody who I want to employ in my job, oh, yeah, I want yeah, somebody yeah. who does all these things yes, too. Yes. So Jesus is dependable for us and it's not just for um, our material goods, so right. for jobs and things like that, but also, I mean, Jarius is literally looking for his child to be alive. Yeah. So yeah. we can trust that Jesus is going to do what he says he's going to do. Amen. So in yeah. our the Word of God, there are tons of promises for believers. Amen. So 
when we see those promises, we can take that to heart and say, Jesus is going to make it happen. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. So what we hope that you come out with today is that we can trust what Jesus says he's going to do. Amen. And then when somebody else is asking us to do something, it's incumbent upon us. We need to do this to be dependable for them. Amen. So Miss Nadu, when you text me and ask for certain things, I got to show up with them. Amen. Because I said, I'll be dependable for you. And the same goes for you, Dick and Derek. Amen. Amen. Sounds good. <laughs> so we have a little video to talk about that little topic. So let's watch that now. Today, we're visiting the Chamanuka Nature Reserve in Zambia, Africa. A reserve is an area of land where the animals are free to roam and are safe from hunters and other dangers. Chamanuka has over 72 different species of animals in the park. Animals like elephants, giraffes, and zebras. This is Jinvis. He's one of the caretakers on the reserve. He is responsible for making sure the animals here are taken care of. He makes sure they're healthy and that the animals have the right foods to eat. He also helps make sure that the animals have the shade they need to keep cool on a hot day. The animals in the reserve depend on him. Today, his two children, Richard and Yvonne, are joining him on the reserve. But first, they need to take care of some chores at their home. Richard cleans his room, and Yvonne sweeps and mops the floor. Richard spends some time reading the Bible, and then he takes care of the chickens. Yvonne cleans up the kitchen and prepares breakfast. She joins her brother to help feed the chickens, and then they water the plants around the house. Their parents depend on them to do their chores. When the chores are done, they head to the reserve. It's important to Jinvis that his children know why it's important to take care of the animals. Their first stop is to check in on an elephant. This elephant was rescued and brought to Chamanuka, so it's used to people. If this was a wild elephant, you wouldn't get this close to it. Jinvis tells Richard and Yvonne about the elephant and does a quick inspection to make sure she's healthy. Everything looks good. Back on the trail, they travel to another part of the reserve. Soon they see giraffes. These are Yvonne's favorite animals because they are so tall and graceful. The reserve is a great place for the giraffes to live. They have plenty of tall trees that provide food and shade. It takes a lot of work to make sure the reserve has everything that the animals need to survive. Jinvis is dependable and proud of the work he does. As they travel through the reserve, they see zebra, impalas, kudu, wildebeest, and many other animals. All the animals are doing well. This reserve also has cheetahs. Jinvis helps take care of them and educates people on why cheetahs are important animals. Even though these cheetahs are used to being around people, they're still wild animals and can be dangerous. On the reserve, the cheetahs depend on Jinvis and the other workers for their food. Because so many animals depend on Jinvis, he has to be dependable. He comes to work when he is supposed to. He learns about the different animals so he knows how to take care of them. Jinvis works hard, even when it's hot outside. Just as the animals depend on Jinvis, we can depend on Jesus. He is always here for us. <laughs> hey, Miss Nadu, you had something to share with us? Yeah, I want to ask my friends to come, so we're going to take a look at no, no, no. how a ruler and a hammer. My name is Rep. So I'm going to ask the two of you to check out this ruler. I want you to tell me how you think it weighs. Just put it in your hand. Tell me if you think it's heavy or light. 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 You think it's light? Well, you try it by yourself, and then we'll have Jarelli try it by herself. Both of you think it's light? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll put the ruler down. Next, we have this object. Off the top of your head, do you think this is heavy or light? A little bit heavier. A little bit yeah. heavy? Okay. How would you grab this? Would you hold it the same way you did the ruler? No. No. Why? Yeah, it's a little bit heavier, right? Yeah. What about you, Jarelli? Do you feel like you can hold it? Yeah, you want to hold it with two hands. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty heavy, right? Yeah. So if we were to weigh these two, we'd say there's a difference. A big difference between the way they weigh. 
Now, do you think that this guy can hold up this guy, or do you think this guy can hold up this guy? That guy can hold up that guy. Okay, well, let's see what goes on. First, I'm gonna put this on top of this. I'm gonna grab the string here. I'm gonna put it around this. I'm gonna see if I can get them to sort of rest together. That's my first experiment. Oh, it looks like it's not quite working out, right? Oh, yeah, it looks like there's a little bit too much weight going on with this one, right? Okay, what if I tried the ruler by itself? What do you think? Can you take the ruler by itself? You think you can get it to balance? Almost, almost. Ooh. I think you have an idea. I feel like you have an idea. Mm. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. Let's see what happens if you hold it. Oh, Whoa. look at you. Look at you, you got it to weigh in the middle. It shifted a little bit, but I saw it. It was in the middle. Nice. You got it to balance. It's a little tricky. Mm. But this, I think this is just absolutely crazy, right? We can't, we can't do this. I have a class where we teach something called the midpoint and I hang it on my finger like this, right? Right now, I put my finger at the middle. You know how rulers are 12 inches? I put my finger at the middle of it. And that's kind of what you were doing. You were doing that with the string, but you, couldn't, you didn't quite get it. All right, so here we go with this very light ruler. You told me it was light and this very heavy hammer. I'm gonna try to put them together and see if I can somehow get this ruler and this hammer to work together so that this holds this up. I'm gonna put this on the edge of this little surface here. Oh my. Right? Okay. Deacon is already worried. What's I'm going concerned. on? He's already worried. I'm going to put a string like that. Then I'm going to take this hammer, which we said is kind of heavy. Okay, so I'm going to hold this like so. I, you know. <laughs> I'm going to hang this like this. So far, do you think something good or bad is going to happen? If I let go of the ruler, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to tilt over. It's going to tilt over, probably kind of like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think you're right about that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you already see what's gonna happen. But if I do something like that. Shirley, <gasps> <laughs> I love your face. <laughs> what do you think wow. is going on there? Uh, Are you surprised? Mm -hmm. Yes. Really you didn't think that was gonna happen, did you? No. Mm. You think it's supposed to fall? <laughs> Maybe because it's holding that up. It is held against that, yeah. And then also, even though this is super light, we're actually using a little bit of laws of gravity, not gravity, um, physics, I guess. We're mm -hmm. using physics. Whoa, that's intense stuff. <laughs> laws of physics, right? We're balancing, the fact that this is touching here is counterbalancing, even though this is crazy heavy. I'd say maybe the hammer is about three pounds or something like that. And this is probably not even, this is ounces, right? Mm -hmm. Super light. Look at your, really, your face is priceless right now. So <laughs> I'm going to attempt and see what happens. I'm gonna move the string a little bit. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna move the string a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna move the string a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, we're still good. I'm gonna move a little bit more. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Things just got crazy, right? So we lost our ability, because once we saw, you pointed out, May, that the hammer was holding on here. So once I moved over a little too much more, the hammer couldn't handle it. The hammer was too heavy and it fell down. Mm. So now, in the first instance, when we had the hammer hanging just nice, we were using what's called a very dependable law of physics, right? So there are some things that are true in science when you learn physics. Have you learned physics yet, May? No. Yeah, I think you have a couple of more grades to go for that. But in physics, we learn that some things that are always true. So if I throw a ball in the air, it will fall back down, right? That's gravity. It always is gonna pull it back down. If I jump up in the air, I'm gonna come back down, right? It's gravity, right? If I throw a ball, the ball will go up in the air and it'll come back down. So some things are very dependable. Jesus is just that dependable. No matter what is going on, we can trust and believe that if there's a problem, like in the story you read me, uh, the young, the young uh, child was ill and then actually passed away. Jesus was not even phased about that. He was like, we're gonna keep on going. We're on our way to this place and we're gonna take care of this child. And you remember? Do you remember what you read about when he first got there and they laughed at him? What did he say? He, he went to the girl. When he went to the house, right? And, and he was like, he said something to them and people were like, ha, 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 ha. Do you remember what they said? It was pretty, pretty crazy. I'll, I'll just remind you. He first said, 
she's not dead, she's asleep. And they laughed because they thought he was talking craziness. But in mm. reality, he knew what he was saying and he actually brought her back from death to life. Jesus is just that dependable. Mm -hmm. That's what we're gonna remind you of today. Okay? Thank you so much, ladies. Amen. And you guys can stick around because we're about to end here. But also remember that when we're dependable, we're reflecting God. Amen. How Amen. dependable He is. So we need to close out in prayer. Jarelli, could you do that for us? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jarelli. Dear God, thank you for this day, Lord. What I just learned, Lord, was really crazy, Lord. And so much other things, Lord, that I want to learn more, more, Lord, about you. And other things that I learned, Lord, that was really crazy for today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 All right. Amen. So we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.